this um, we're going to, in this exercise we're going to learn a few more tools in Illustrator, and we're also going to um, yeah, and we're going to experiment with a few with some new illustration techniques as well. Um, all right, so a couple tools that are probably going to be interesting to you are um, the brush, even though the um, the pen is sort of the most refined tool, um, but the brush is kind of exactly what you think it is, even though it's different than um, than Photoshop. And Photoshop kind of has the feeling of like uh, being able to just smear things everywhere. Um, the brush will draw lines, and um, you can use the mouse or a Wacom tablet or whatever. Um, to draw lines organically and sometimes you need them but you don't have too much control with the brush it's not so it's not um, the best always um, but let's check it out so in this so we're gonna do all things brushy um, and so the first thing that we could do in this piece though is start with a rectangle because um, remember, we're always trying to make completed illustrations, even if they're small. Um, then, just like in some of your other pieces, I go to swatches, and I will go into gradients, and I'll look for a sky gradient because we're going to be making a little landscape. So I'll take this sky, and of course the sky isn't um, vertical, so I take the gradient tool, which is here, um, and it's just G on the keyboard, um, and then I can sort of fashion whatever sky that I want to, um, even to the extent of like, you know, modifying the colors, stuff like that, if I, if I click on those little symbols. Okay, so that's good enough, that's fine. And while we are thinking about this scene and trying to give you new ways to do things, Let's say we never really want to move this sky, right? So we could lock the layer, uh, but instead we're going to lock the object. So we'll just go object lock um, selection, right? And that is command two, right? So, so maybe, you know, let's try to do this just all on one layer, uh, just for the sake of doing it that way so you see a different way of operating. All right, so now you have the sky. So now I return to the paintbrush and we're sort of thinking about um, a couple different stages, right? Like maybe there's big mountains in the background. Um, so I'll just draw, you know, some mountains and I'm just sort of freehanding this with my mouse. All right, and then, but I always think about shapes, right? So I always think about um, the shape stacking over everything. Well, so this shape has stroke but no fill, right? So then I simply have to flip it around. And then um, for this one, I'll just choose black. But you could, you could find another dark gradient that goes with this maybe. Um, let's see, oops, there. So we're kind of making this look of a silhouette um, against a sky and then let's see what else can we do here uh, hmm. all right oh no I'm getting myself in over my head oh that's what I wanted okay so this this tool right below the brush um, has all these other options like the pencil and the smooth tool the pencil in the smooth tool lets you kind of redraw the pace, the shape that you made. Now I don't like this shape because it doesn't really look like a mountain. So I'm going to select this block that I made and sort of give myself another chance with the pencil. That doesn't look very rocky. It looks like whipped cream or something. All right, so in any selected shape, if you just redraw a little profile, the pencil will connect it up for you. Um, the pencil is N and the brush is B. 
Okay, now just like before, um, we're going to lock the selection. Cool. And now we're going to, so we're, st we're sort of, we've studied the pen, right? We know that understanding how the pen works is the key to drawing, um, but we're now introducing these other tools, such as the paintbrush and the pencil that you might sometimes need, right? So the other tool in this set is the eraser. Um, so let's, uh, before we lock it, um, let's take a look at when something is selected and you choose the eraser, then it just does what you'd expect it to do. It just cuts into the object. But it doesn't have those fun, like tactile, you know, finger painting brushes like um, Photoshop does. Because it's vector based, it always is going to be hard edged, you know, like constantly. Um, the eraser has some sub tools that are pretty useful, like the knife. So the knife, if you, um, and I'm holding shift when I do this, uh, but you can just draw a line and then you'll have two separate objects, right? So then you'll have two objects that are cut in half that you can rearrange, right? So, um, okay, so all those tools together, if you've gotten over the hump of the pen, of the pen and you understand it, um, and you and you get good with it, then basically if you add these to your repertoire, then you then you can become super powerful because you can always, you know, um, you can always draw whatever you envision, whatever kind of shape you need from a from like a really rigid cylinder to something um, to something really soft and organic. Um, all right, let me just join these guys back together with the Pathfinder. Let me see if this will work. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so these are all joined together and everything is going to be locked, object lock, selection, command two, and I'm doing that today instead of using layers. Um, so now we're going to um, build a custom brush and sort of show, show you the power of how you can use a custom brush and how you can use it to, um, to create imagery over and over again, right? So, uh, so this is our little landscape and we're going to make a forest. Um, oh, but first let's add a moon just for fun. So I'm going to take an ellipse, um, just cause this is a reminder and it completes our drawing. Um, all right. And then I take regular selection, copy the ellipse and move it. So then the copy will go right on top. All right. Now I have both of these guys selected. And then in the shape modes in the Pathfinder, I'm going to do minus front, which is the second mode. So that gives me a moon shape. And then I'm going to just make sure that it's brighter than the sky. Um, anyways, you can go on and on and you can add as much detail as you want here. Um, just as long as what you turn in is a complete illustration, that's kind of a good uh, a good thing to do when you're practicing and learning this technical stuff to always make it complete. All right, now next we're going to draw some trees. So I'm going to just simplify this and draw um, for the trunk of the tree. We'll make it sort of straight, right? And then we will make it brown, whatever color brown. I think it should be a little lighter so that we can see it against the black. Um, all right, and then finally, to make it not so uh, square, I'm going to uh, just taper it because that's how they'll be in real life. Um, now, I'm going to design a brush that will let us freely draw limbs. All right, and let me show you how to do that. It's really, it's really fun, and it will give you an idea of sort of the power that Illustrator has once you are over that initial hump. Um, so I'm going to use this brushes palette and tear it off. And basically, the only thing that I need for this is um, is a big is a long triangle, like that's that's kind of it. So I'm going to draw. Um, I'm going to start with a point. I'm still using the same brown, that's fine. And then I'm gonna click and pull because I want the base of that triangle to be round. Um, and then I can go over here, click and pull and go all the way back up. And then I can go over here and close it, right? So now I have um, this thing that if you kind of imagine it, like if it wasn't so straight, 
um, if you could command it to curve around, you could use it to draw branches and roots. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to drag it into the brushes palette. Um, and the type of brush that we want is called an art brush. And uh, so if you don't have the brushes window open, it looks like a little can of brushes. And remember, any palette you can find under window. Uh, it, so window and show brushes, and that'll give you um, what you're looking for. All right, so we're making an art brush. And see, I don't know if you can see on my screen, but the arrow is going down. So that's not right. It needs to, it needs to follow from base to tip the way that I draw. And then it needs to scale proportionally. All right, and that is going to be about it. And then this is really key. We have to deselect the sample that we made before using the brush. So now I'm going to go back to brush and I have the brush already set. And when I draw a line, it will just, I can make whatever scribbly line I want to and it will apply the brush to it, right? Um, so even, so I'm drawing with the mouse today because uh, I think my Wacom pen is my other computer or something, but, um, but even with your, <coughs> With your mouse and your trackpad, this is still, you know, super powerful and it's still really, um, really good to know, right? Cool. So you go from, you go from this, uh, you know, feeling like Illustrator is really inorganic, like you can only make squares and stuff, and then realizing that sort of that planning, you know, that thing of being able to look at a drawing and plan out what you want the illustration to be um, is just super duper powerful and really you can make anything. Uh, but it's a diff a little bit different feeling um, than, than if you're used to, than if you're just used to drawing, right? Like if you're used to drawing, it's always intuitive and you maybe you're the type of person that doesn't really ever learn any techniques when you draw and you just sort of draw according to your own vision and you can't explain why it's good, but it is, you know, but Illustrator just needs one extra step. You do a drawing and then you make a plan for that drawing. All right, so this is really, really cool. I mean, this could easily be, you know, some kind of logo here in Bend. Um, and then in order to shape it up, I'm going to use the Blob Brush Tool. Um, and the Blob Brush Tool is, so So here's the difference, okay? The, the paintbrush, it lets you draw shapes. Oops, I did not demonstrate that very good because I was still on my on my um, my custom brush that I made. So I want to switch off of that, and in fact, I want no brush, right? So that means no stroke. And now with a normal brush, I can just draw any kind of a shape um, that I can use. Oops, still switched on that last setting. Okay. Let me try this again. <laughs> All right, so um, so yeah, so that so you saw I was changing the setting, but the shape wasn't selected. So the tool was holding the setting from the last time I drew, right? That's what was happening. Um, All right, so I have to make sure that everything is deselected. Basic stroke, and the stroke is set to no. Then I'm going to draw with my brush. Deleted. Okay, well, I don't know why it's always defaulting to that, but basically the brush, um, so the paintbrush tool lets you draw shapes and the blob brush tool works a little bit differently in that it lets you um, fill stuff in, right? So here's the, okay, here's my blob brush tool. And then I'm just pressing the open bracket key or the close bracket key to make it bigger. And then I'm working with that same color and anywhere I want to fill in, it will draw it will draw a shape using fill, right? So I can sort of smooth out this squareness of this trunk that I started with. Cool. Um, and you can see that all using all this stuff together gets kind of complex. It's complex for me, so go slowly for sure. Um, just like in Photoshop, open bracket and close bracket will let you change the size of your brush. Cool. All right, so now um, so now we have this tree, which is a pretty cool looking tree. 
Um, I'm going to go back to my regular brush and then it huh, defaulted to that again. So I'm not sure why, but I want it to, I want the branches to spread a little more, right? So I can, you know, kind of have a larger tree here. And then, um, and then finally, uh, what I can do with this tree, so this is the tree without any leaves. Um, so then I can select this whole thing and maybe I'll just group it before I do this. And then maybe I'll drag in this whole thing into my brushes palette, make a new art brush, select okay, make sure it's proportional and make sure it goes in a way that makes sense. So for me, because trees grow up, this direction needs to make sense. All right. So now, making sure that I deselected, whenever I draw with this brush, I will then create a little tree. Oops, the wrong one selected. Okay, so there is my, my new brush that I made, and it will create little trees everywhere. Cool. So let's, um, let's move on with this. Okay, so this is part one. And then we're not ready to work on this landscape yet, unless you want to have one little dead tree um, up here. That's kind of nice, right? This one little creaky dead tree right here. That looks good. Cool. Um, so maybe there's a couple dead trees in the very back. And then we'll see another thing that we can do with brushes. And then we'll be ready to finish this project.